more pulse than drumbeat. At a ceremony shortly after dawn, Ukraine reminding itself and the world that after a year of war and sacrifice, it wasn't just alive, but fighting. Striding out of St. Sophia Cathedral here, where Vladimir Putin had hoped to pray after his conquest, the actor turned wartime president who's become the master of the message. I am grateful to everyone who endured that February and this year. And everyone who gives Ukraine invincibility. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. President Zelensky plays many parts well. Commander-in-chief of an army that is made up in large part of citizens turned soldiers who a year ago and one day could not have imagined how their lives would be transformed. <laughs> Griever-in-chief, mic'd up to project the grit of his voice, rasping in the world's ear. <laughs> And as David to Putin's Goliath, Zelensky is the leader who's inspired a battered West in need of moral rebooting. But beyond the stage of remembrance is today's theater of war. In Bakhmut in the east, where Russian troops are apparently gaining ground in an artillery duel that has been described as a meat grinder. Today is also a day for cemeteries. In the shadow of Kyiv's skyline, the roll call of those who forged Ukraine's identity, stars of football or opera, now joined by the celebrities of conflict, the fallen commanders of this war. A salute to a comrade and a cup of red for the afterlife. And then there are the expanding graveyards, tucked away in remote corners where the churned up earth is home to the fallen ranks. Natalia shapes the mound where her 22-year-old son is buried with the tenderness of a grieving mother. Vitali was studying to be a lawyer when the war began and he volunteered to fight on the front line. All I know is he was proud of joining the Azov Battalion. He said that to his sister, that these were the best years of his life, no matter how strange it sounds. There are hundreds of graveyards like this all over Ukraine and tens of thousands of grieving mothers. The number in Russia is thought to be twice as high, at least. But Natalia feels no sympathy for the mothers on the other side. They should think for themselves about what they're doing. I will never forgive them. Never, ever. They've caused so much grief to the country. That's why I have nothing to say to them. I can't, I can't, nothing. They don't think, these mothers. On the outskirts of Kyiv, the town of Bucha, where today they also remembered the civilians slaughtered in Russia's war of choice. At least 400 were killed here by Russian troops, frustrated that their lightning advance on the capital a year ago had been thwarted. They took it out on the locals, whose fatal misfortune was location. But all of it, the year-long catalogue of pain and slaughter, the countless stolen futures, in the end, it all comes down to one man who honoured his fallen in Moscow yesterday, and one truth. This war is all on him. <laughs>